What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pain Sucks Podcast. I'm Matt Malonis. Dr. Justin. It's awesome. We're uh, super excited. We know last week was deep. We got a lot of feedback. It was 30 minutes long. It took a long time to do And uh, we dove into regenerative medicine at ridiculously uh, deep levels. And I think that the feedback's been really good. People saying that they've learned a lot. So lots of questions. Lots, lots of, of questions. questions. Which are great. Keep asking. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's wonderful because it is cutting edge and it is yeah. a new thing. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we're presenting to you everything we're learning. Absolutely. And there's going to be more. And I would doubt in the next year or two we'll do another one and it'll change. 100%. But that's the beauty <laughs> of, too. It's the beauty of, uh, it's the beauty of um, constantly staying top of the new science. Right. But one of the things we want to do is, to, is talk about old faithful stuff today. So today's going to be short and quick. We want you to start to be able to apply this. One of the questions we get all the time as practitioners is, ouch, should I ice it or, or should, should I, I heat it? it? Every single day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day in the clinic. And I think that ice or heat. I think that uh, even growing up, ice was part of the rice treatment, yep. even from our, uh, you know, athletic trainers yep. and all that kind of stuff. And as you get older, you got that, um, that you know, within 72 hours, you're going to do this. And after 72 hours, you're going to do that. If it's a joint, you do this. And yep. we just want to dispel some myths and rumors and, and, and talk about it. So if I came to you, Dr. Justin, and my back hurt, and I said, should I ice or heat it? Are you able to answer that question? All of it. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but the, the fact is, is that it's different for every person. It's different for every person. Okay? And it's different for the injury. Correct. Okay? So there's some, there's some general rules like that. So if you just have no idea what to do, right. like that, you go, okay, look, here's some rules to follow by this. Like right. that, you can do some ice, you can do some heat. Right. Here's when you do it, those types of things. Um, but it's really different person to person like that. So, I, I mean, we, we do it every day where they're like, do I ice this one? I'm like, I, I would put heat on it. Right. Like, like It's just a different injury than it was before. Okay? So it really does depend on the person. Exactly. So not only does it depend on the person, it depends on the type of injury. Yep. And I think it depends on the timing of the injury. I mean, one of the things that we're very clear on is like, sometimes when you're hurting, you need to do nothing yeah. and stop getting in the way of the body healing. However, hold on, hold on. they just like lost their breath with that one. I know. Okay, so I'm, I'm dying explain. in pain. Do nothing. Yeah. Explain that one. Dig me out. Yeah. Dig me out. Yeah. Yeah. Explain this one. Here's the truth. The, we talked about this a couple of episodes about, about acute inflammation and chronic. Yeah. When you hurt yourself, there's pain associated, and that pain is a side effect of the chemicals that your body's putting into the area to actually heal the injury. And sometimes we're so quick to get rid of the pain that we can disrupt the yeah. normal healing. Now, that's not to say you don't do it, but at the same time, there's sometimes, and each in my own experience with my back and with dealing with you know chronic and disc herniation people for eight years now all over the world, I found that most of us have this thing where it's like ice didn't help. Why right. wouldn't ice help? Sometimes it just gets in the way. So True. we're not saying don't do it. We're saying there's times that you need the ice and times right. you need the heat and times you need to both. Times you do nothing. That gotcha. doesn't help us. We're Correct. back at the Correct. beginning now. So break, t- dig me out of this hole. So, so in general, so like, let me just go in general. Okay. Like, so if you don't know what to do with this, yeah. okay. So in general, joints, yeah. knees, elbows, stuff like that, like, right. like ice. Right. Okay. Like that, they're going to respond better to ice. Muscles, like if you pulled a muscle, Correct. muscles do much better with heat yeah. like that because they need more blood flow to it. Right. Okay? So I go through this a lot with patients. I go, look, and just in very general terms, right? Heat is going to be used to increase blood flow okay, to that area. So we're going to rush healing elements there. Okay? And it's designed to get you through that next thing. Yeah. Okay? So if you know that you're fixing, let's use just working out, for example. Yeah. Okay? So if you are going to the gym and working out, you would use heat beforehand. Yeah. To put it on there, it's going to rush blood to those muscles. It's going to dilate the blood vessels. You're going to get better performance out of that. Okay, whereas you would ice afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like that ice is going the opposite. It's going to constrict blood vessels like that. So it's going to suck swelling out of that system. Like okay? that. Now it's not to say that you shouldn't heat or ice all the time. Okay. Right. So I tell people in general, it's like, look, if you don't know, and in the short term. I generally tell them to choose ice. Right. You know, it's kind of the safer bet. Yeah. Like that. So if you've got a lot of inflammation or swelling, toss some ice on there, call us like that, yeah. or come in like that. Yeah. We'll look at it. We'll tell you if you did the right thing or not. Right. But in general, I tell them to choose ice over heat. But yeah, but there's a cycle where you're kind of alternating both of them. They both have their place. Gotcha. And so I think in general, I would agree with that. Yeah. If you have something going on and you're not quite sure what to do, put some ice on it. You'll find out how you did. Yep. You can't do any damage, can you? Cor- nah, not really. No, not really. Yeah. Now, now, if you left it on way yes. too long, yeah. straight on the skin, yeah. you'll yes. burn the skin. Like 20 minutes, guys. Right. 20 minutes is your maximum. Right. Kind of The ice research kind of says... 
Look, it takes about 15 minutes to penetrate 90% of what it's going to penetrate. Right. And at 20 minutes, it's penetrated like 95%. Yeah. And it would take another like three hours right. to get that other 5%. Yeah. So yeah. anything over, like in that 15 to 20 minute range, you're done. Take it off. There's no point in having it on all day long. Agree. So in, this yeah. is me, and you can tell me if you disagree with me. I agree with you. If you don't really know what to do, and you're, you're kind of confused on which one do I do, I see. Yes. Do your 20 minutes, yes. I see how you do. Correct. Here's my second thought. If it's, it's, again, now something, maybe you iced it and didn't really notice a, a huge change. The next time you do something, yep. I'm going to tell you to do this. I want you to heat it. Right. But then right after you heat it, I want you to ice it again. Right. So I don't want you to do just heat. I want you to do like 20 minutes of heat followed by an ice pack and then see how you do. 99% of the people tell us. It's much better. Yeah. It works. Done. It works. So those are kind of the orders we want to do. We now, do this with ankles all the time. Yeah. Like hot, cold bath, stimulates right. length, really sucks the swelling out of it. I get it. I get it. Now, here's the last thing. So, but, but then if it's purely just a muscle pull. Heat. You can heat it, and you will it. just Good. win. Big and time. you, you kind of know, like muscles, muscles need blood flow. Like right. I, I give you great example, hamstrings. Right. Very poor blood flow to the hamstrings, right. like that. They're very slow healers. We want to rush as much blood there as humanly possible. Right. Okay. They've got to have that to heal. Okay. So most of us kind of know. You can kind of tell, like, is it in my shoulder or did I pull a muscle here? Right. Okay. So you can kind of tell a difference a lot of times. Summarize what we just said there. Yeah. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? So if you don't know what to do like that, you're going to ice it first. Okay. Like that. See how you do. There's really no damage 15 to 20 minutes, especially if it's an acute injury. Like that, like you see some swelling just there. Happened. Like, yeah, just happened within 24 hours of it. Go ahead and put some ice on it. Let's right. see how you do. Like right. that. Um, now, the benefit to heat is more muscles. Like that, it's going to dilate, loosen you up. So before activity, okay, we need to get loose. We need to dilate stuff to prevent further injury. We're going to use heat in general. Um, but they're both used together. Right. Okay, step number three is that you want to ice and heat continuously back, like back and forth back like and that forth. to really stimulate that healing. Effect. Yeah, and I think that's really good. And so hopefully that helps because yeah. I know once we explain that face to face to people, they're like, I get it. Yeah. And we really don't have any issues. Yeah. I do want to end today's podcast with one more question. When you tell people to ice, what should they use? Because people are like, <laughs> are frozen veggies okay? Right. Do I have to use ice cubes? I've got this yeah. thing left over that's frozen in the bottom of my right. thing that yeah. keeps my lunch bag cool. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use, like I have gel ice packs okay. like that, that you can use like that. But then again, like, like the old school me, college football me, like yeah. like the old ice packs and everything else like that. Yeah. I have no I have no problems pulling out a Ziploc bag. Yeah. Ice like throwing ice cubes in there, a little bit of water, like yeah. that sucking the air out of it. Right. Um, okay. Make sure that you put something between your skin and that. So I'll take a paper towel some yeah. a lot of times and just dampen it. Right. And lay that between. Like that. So you still get the full effect, but it doesn't burn the skin that way. Love it, okay. love it. So there's um, lots of options. Yeah, not a big fan of frozen vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> if that's well. all you have, you yeah. get a couple yeah. minutes. Exactly. That's about it. Exactly, yeah. but there's guys you can look up online. Like ice gel ice packs are cheap on yeah. Amazon. They're right. you know very very cheap. Right. Or there's recipes that you can make gel ice packs. Like right. you can use rubbing alcohol, ice, and stuff like that. And it makes this gel that freezes and unfreezes. Like gotcha. that. they're super easy. Yep, and a Ziploc with yeah. ice in it. I'm Again, sure. I think the big thing isn't so much what you use. It's just keeping a layer between whatever you're using in your skin yep. so that you don't irritate yep. it. Yep. The second thing is when we talk about heat. One of the things I want to warn people about is. You, we really want you using moist heat, yeah. uh, not dry heat. So you can buy a whole bunch of hot packs that you plug in, and they they, they warm things up, but they're very but they're very <coughs> dry. And so the, putting some moisture with that will actually get that penetration a little bit deeper, two through three inches even right. through the skin. And so I tell people all the time, don't go throw out the hot packs that you have necessarily if they're dry heat. You plug them in, and there's no moisture. You could always take a hand towel, soak it, wring it out, lay that over it, right. and then that heat will push that moisture through. Correct. What are your thoughts? Correct. Hundred um, percent. Heating pads are very popular. A lot of them have the, that felt cover on there right. anyway for right. protection, like right. that. So you can just take a rag and wet it and replace that felt cover. Right. Like that. Now you've got moist heat. Yeah. Um, or. Like, I mean, you know, they make those little bean bags with the, right. the hot things you throw yeah. in the microwave and right. stuff like that. You can wet a rag, toss it around, and throw it yeah. in the microwave with it. So it all warms up together. Heat is more yeah, 100%. Important. Yeah, we want it to be, yeah. yeah, dry yeah. heat's no good. We really yeah. want you to have a muscle yeah. injury or something. Yeah. We want that it's just not as effective. Too. It's right. not going to penetrate into right. the whole point of heat is we're going to dilate those blood yeah, vessels and get stuff flowing to that area. So we've got to penetrate the surface of right. the skin. And that brings us to the last one. Uh, is heating, uh, can you get in a bathtub? 
as a form of sure. Of heating. Sure. Hot yeah. showers, stretch. Sometimes okay. people yeah. tell me that. They're like, yeah. well, I didn't put a hot back on, I took a bath. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, fine. So, fantastic. Uh, remember, the point of heat is to get some movement in there, yeah. too. Okay. So a lot of times I'll tell people, it's like, look, get in the hot shower, let it hit like right on this spot, and I want you stretching it while we're doing right. that. So you're Great. activating the muscle tissue while it's working. So hopefully that helps, because I know this is like, a, <laughs> I'm sure practitioners all over the world are like, Thank um, you for answering that question because yeah. we hear it all the time. Yeah. Which and it's a great question to ask. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we've we've answered that for you. And of course you can always write in if you have more questions. So uh, we thank you guys for listening. Please like it. Please uh, comment if you have comments. Please subscribe and share. That's really how people are getting this wonderful information. So uh, we'll see you next week for the Pain Sucks podcast. Remember that nobody and we mean nobody gets to tell you that you can't heal. Amen, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.